go back to uh, Google Tag Manager. Um, this is the home screen, and I have uh, for this demonstration today, I have set up a site called server-site gtm.dk. So this is my test site. Uh, this is our playground. So when we are testing new features and just yeah, fiddling around with new technology, this is our demonstration site. So uh, yeah, so no one is really using it. It's just something I can I can show you, and there's no risk in doing the live demonstration. Um, but first thing we need to do, as I said before, we need to install cookie information and we need to install Google consent mode. And this is have this is really easy with cookie information's new template because this is doing everything for us basically. So what you need to do is that you need to go into templates and you need to install the template called cookie information plus consent mode version two. The way you found it, find it is you go into search gallery and you just search for cookie information, uh, consent mode version two, and then you could, yeah, you can open it and you can add it to your workspace. I'm not going to do it now because then I'm overwriting my version. So, but once you added it, uh, you will see it here in your tag templates. So that was step eight, step one. Uh, then we need to install Kuga information consent mode. I already installed it, but I'm just going to show you again how to do it. So we press new and you go into tags and then you need to find your Kuga information consent mode version two tag. And now you need to add the settings. Um, so we're just going to go through um, each one. Uh, the first one is quite obvious, but it's installing cookie information banner. Um, and to make sure that the timing of everything is working correctly, if you already added the banner in your source code on your website, I would recommend you to remove it from the source code and use the template instead because then you're sure that everything would be working correctly. So if you are in WordPress or Shopify or whatever you're using, I would recommend you to remove it from the source code and use this template instead. Yeah, so add cookie information banner, uh, the one we just set up. Um, the next mark is called redact add data. And what this does is that if a user has declined add storage or marketing, uh, then they're still going to be sent some some pings uh, without personal, inf personal information to Google server because it's going to be used for modeling. Uh, the ones that decline consent can be modeled into the data set anyway. And if you add this redact adds data, it's like a double secure way because if there's any click identifiers in URLs and so on, they are going to strip those and they're also going through some cookie-less domains. Um, so it, it really doesn't have any real impact on the tracking, but it's like a, a way to make double, double sure that there is no personal information. It doesn't affect uh, the data quality, but it's, it's more safe for the end user. So I always just check this. Uh, the next one, pass through URL parameters. Um, that one is only relevant if you don't have a uh, overlay banner. So if you have an overlay banner, please don't check this. But if you have a banner, like you know the ones in the bottom of the page, the smaller ones, if you have a banner that's small and you can actually navigate the site without consenting or using the banner, then this should be turned on and what happens is that if you go from, let's say you click on Google ad and you go to the website, in your URL, you will have your click ID. But if you don't consent on page one and you navigate to page two, the click ID will not follow you until page two. And if you then consent on page two, we don't have any click ID to store. So if you check this, Google would automatically add the click IDs to all internal URLs. So if you click from page one to page two to page three, the click ID will follow you. So once you consent on page three, 
we can store the click ID. Um, but this is uh, not relevant if you uh, have an overlay banner and it's not really, it's not that pretty um, for the URLs and it could actually also mess up some internal uh, JavaScript on your site. So if you have overlay, as I recommend, don't add this. Yeah, uh, then we have um, some default settings and this is really simple because you don't need to do anything. So all these different consents should always be denied because it's the default state. You could override it if you don't want to uh, comply with the GDPR saying, well, I don't care about the users. I will just say everyone grants storage, but I don't really see any scenario where you should change this. So just leave it for denied. And if you have specific regions for US, uh, Denmark, et cetera, then you can add this, but it's really, it's a more complicated setup and it's only a few users who is going to be using this. So I'm not going into details. Uh, if you are have specific questions for regions, uh, you can reach out to me afterwards. So always just say denied. Then we have language and language is the ones that I, showed you in the cookie information, uh, my default language was English. And if you select a language that you don't set up inside cookie information, the banner will not show. So it's quite important that you choose the correct language. So in my case, it's going to be English. And now we're actually more or less done with the setup. Uh, the last one is uh, it's called wait for update. And this is something that a lot of people uh, don't use, but I think it's quite important to set this correctly. Um, it makes more sense when I show you how it works live, but I'm just going to cover it like very briefly here. But what this setting does is that once you open the site and you have a page view, then all the Google tags will fire and they will be waiting for a consent. So if I set this for let's just say three seconds, all the Google tags will wait three seconds for the user to either decline or accept. But if it takes more than three seconds, it will assume that the user has declined. So this will, I normally set it for 15 seconds because we have an overlay banner anyway. So I'm just giving the user a good time to interact with the banner. So even though the user opens the site, has a page view, that page view will just be put in a, a parking lot waiting for consent. And if the user consents after 10 seconds, then we will file the page view with the consent. And if it takes more than 50 seconds, uh, we will still fire a page view, but we will assume that the user will going to be declining the cookies. Uh, if you set this for the default 500 milliseconds, you will be missing all the users that enters the page for the first time. Because if you only give them half a second, then they open the site and they have half a second to accept or decline. And after half a second, Google will assume that they had declined. So you're missing all the data on the first page view. Uh, so this is quite important. And again, I recommend not 150 seconds, but it's milliseconds. So I put it for 15,000 milliseconds. Um, and I think it is going to make more sense when you see it uh, live afterwards. Uh, now we just need the trigger and Google has a built-in trigger made for this called consent initialization. So just use that. It will make sure that the cookie banner is going to be installed as the first thing when you open a site. And I can just press save. Um, I think I'll just call it cookie information banner. So now we actually installed a cookie banner and we also installed consent mode because the tag that cookie information has made has is going to do all the work for us. And, and now see I have I have two because I tested, so I'm just going to the ones I just created, I'm going to delete it. And just to show you uh, how it works, you can press a preview. And server-side GTM. 
before I do that, I'm just going to clear my cookies because I already accepted cookies uh, when I tested earlier. So let's give me a second. I'm just, yeah, I'm just clearing all the cookies on the test side. So I'm going to see the banner. Uh, otherwise, it would re recognize me because I accepted this morning. So now the cookies are gone. And I'm just adding the URL from my page. And I'm going to connect. And hopefully it will work. And now you see that I can see my cookie banner in here. And I can accept and I can decline. And now that I set the timer for 15 seconds, all the Google tags has been given 15 seconds to get either consent or um, what's the opposite of consent, the decline consent. <laughs> and, and it looks like this inside Google Tag Manager. Um, so here is everything that happens on this page. And you will notice here in step, step two is consent initialization. So now we install consent uh, and it has been successful. And here you can see consent has been defined. And if you want to see the consent state, you have this tab called consent. So in here, you can see the consent we have right now and everything is denied because I haven't interacted with the banner. So all tags has been denied for now. Um, I don't think, I'm not sure if I have any tags. Yeah, I have a Google Analytics 4 tag that has been fired successfully. And this means that, well, it has been fired, but it didn't have any consent. So now it's waiting 15 seconds to have consent before it would send any data. Um, yeah, and so now let's, uh, let's try to accept the banner. Um, I need the right browser and now I accept everything. So if we go back to Tag Manager, you can see that we have a new consent event because I consented. Um, and in here now you can see that all the status has been updated for granted. So the Google Analytics 4 tag we had before uh, here, that has been waiting for 15 seconds or less. And now we update. So now the data that has been parked for Google Analytics 4 is going to be fired and sent with consent accepted. And then we have these different cookie information tags that you can use if you are sort of doing an old school setup where you don't use consent mode. Um, but this is not, uh, not, not really relevant here. Yeah, so we get the consent uh, updated and let's just uh, show you how it works when we are just going to refresh the page, uh, simulating that now I go to page two. Uh, the page only has one, one page. And if we see Google Tag Manager, now we have page two. And what you can see here now is that consent is still denied as a default, but because cookie information can remember my consent, it would also fire the consent update with granted and all the text is going to be fired. So now we have consent mode and the good thing is that um, all the Google tags are automatically um, listening to the consent.